Welcome to the Irish Farmers Journal Weekly Podcast, brought to you by Ornua, the home of Irish dairy. This is Peter McCann, Northern Correspondent for the Farmers Journal. I'm in a meeting in uh, Letter Kenny tonight of the ICSA. I'm joined by one of the speakers, uh, Stuart Agnew, is a MEP for the UKIP party in Britain. Um, he's their agriculture spokesperson. Stuart, I suppose um, the whole Brexit thing, um, your, your, your party was fundamental on getting that going. What relevance does uh, your, your party have now, particularly uh, in your own end of things, in the agriculture and the whatever type of policy replaces CAP? Right. Uh, 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 the initial task for UKIP is to make sure things get carried through. So there are four phases in leaving the European Union. The first was to get a referendum in place. The second was to win it. The third is to in- instigate the Article 50. And the fourth is to actually leave. So we're halfway through that journey. I expect the, the second half of the journey to take a lot less time than the 23 years of, of UKIP. Uh, it's possible that will, will be some backsliding, but I've personally been encouraged by the attitude of Theresa May, who has more or less stood back and said, right, they want Brexit, I will deliver Brexit. And, uh, and the second uh, part to your question, well, we will leave the European Union. What happens to UKIP then? Well, there's an extraordinary meltdown going on in British politics at the moment. A lot of people who voted Labour all their lives are now voting UKIP, and the Labour Party is splitting. And we see a lot of votes to harvest in the north of England. And so we are now deciding as a party how we're going to try and hold that vote, what we need to do to do it, and become the formal opposition. Uh, as far as uh, policy replacing CAP or uh, support to farmers, mm. yourselves there, whatever your own policy was, or other parties or other independents that were looking out, um, it, it isn't really up to them. But what is your feeling or what do you think? Uh, well, every take single Conservative MP I've spoken to, whether they're for remain or leave, have said that we will support agriculture in this country. The question is, is how and to what degree? George Eustace, who's come out of this very well, he is now a Secretary of State for DEFRA. He's had a promotion. He was a leave campaign. He was effectively frozen out of that ministry for about three months. Uh, so he is now in a strong position. Uh, he, he isn't Secretary of State. He's just a minister now. Uh, I understand he's called Secretary of State for DEFRA. So I understand, but I'm, I'm, uh, I, I, I believe that's what he's called now. But please check it up. He is talking about uh, a price insurance scheme, which I think is a good idea. He's talking about g- getting futures market to work better, particularly in milk. See, the EU doesn't like futures market and food commodities. They're trying to stop it, make it more difficult, which is a very short-sighted, silly thing to do. We need futures market. Our grain futures market has stood the test of time. And it needs the three elements of those who produce the commodity, the grain, those who use it, and speculators to actually set a price. And it's worked. It's worked in Britain, and we need to encourage that, that model. He's talking about having the same level of support in terms of cash. This is what he's saying. But, of course, I can talk to him, and I, only was, I was talking to him only a week ago in, in London. And, uh, but I'm not in the government. But one or two people are asking my opinion on things, which I'm very flattered by. Um, but the point is, if you were to pull the rug, OK, let's just say pull the rug away from farming. Most of those farmers would lose money. Instead of paying tax, they would claim tax refunds. Instead of employing people who are paying tax and national insurance contributions, those people go on to benefits. So it's not really very clever to pull the rug on agriculture. And, of course, we become more dependent on, in- on imports. And this is an island of 70 million people with only four or five deep water ports that bring all these things in we're absolute sucker for terrorism like that all of these things will go through the government's mind remember they have two duties to defend their people and make sure they have enough to eat finally a shirt quite quite a large attendance in the meeting tonight there was a a serious amount of uh, people uh, talking about um, ireland having a a copycat referendum either leaving or else uh, just uh, complete uh, some sort of reform of the position within europe um, even there at the end about leaving the eurozone um how, how much uh, are you seeing that across Europe? There are two reactions to me now when, when I walk around Brussels and Strasbourg. One is people who uh, can't bear to look at me, and the other who people come up and shake my hand and say, thank God Britain's done it, now perhaps my country will do it. And I'm talking about MEPs from Eurosceptic parties. So I think a ball has started to roll, and the EU has got to recognise this. They've got to recognise they've gone too far into people's lives, this whole thing has become too deep, it's also gone too far geographically, and we're bringing in people of completely different cultures into a, ultimately a Schengen situation. And a lot of the people in Europe are worried by this now. So the Commission 
and the council, etc. They, they've got the European Council. They've got to get their heads out of the sand, stop being so stubborn and obstinate, and realise the people they're governing don't want to go on this journey. The Irish Farmers Journal Weekly Podcast, brought to you by Ornua, the home of Irish dairy.